the reason why they're great stories is because it's unexpected. If I'm sitting down, I'm like, Adam, Jacob, check this out. And then the story is back to breakfast. Like the story is, <laughs> you guys, I made scrambled eggs and toast this morning. Our podcast is all about you guys and your journey in music. And we'll talk about, obviously, the new record you just put out, which is amazing. I just watched the video, the animated music video you guys did, which is uh, awesome. Sweet. Thank you. Yeah. And thank uh, you. everything else you guys got going on. So um, I always start with born and raised. Uh, where were you born and raised, Jim? I was born in a town called Fresno, California, raised in Modesto, which is a little bit north of Fresno. Um, yeah, I'm in the Central Valley of California farm farm farmland. Life. yeah and i'm i'm from san diego i know a little bit about fresno driving through there to go to san francisco <laughs> yeah totally that's, that's how most people wind up there on the way to yosemite or san francisco or Sacramento. sure what was it like growing up there i mean it was a lot different than it is now um <clears throat> excuse me you know it was it was just kind of a small town at that point uh which meant something entirely different you know in the 70s and 80s than it does now, you know, like before, I don't want to go too deep into this, but before corporate America had made every town in the world the same sure. town. <laughs> yeah, um, I got you. <laughs> so, you know, it was just a small farm town, basically. There were like not quite 100,000 people that lived there when I was a kid. My mm -hmm. grandfather was a farmer, so we spent a lot of time. He had a few different ranches, um, grapes, almonds, peaches, wow. um, walnuts, and my dad actually owns some of the property that he used to farm now the, the property where my mom grew up that's um, cool and it was just a cool it was just a cool little town there wasn't much to do and there weren't many people like i'm you know i started out in a band called granddaddy mm -hmm. um which i joined in 2005 and there weren't very many people like us in the sense that i think we had a longing for um i don't know a little more intellectual stimulation and cultural stimulation mm -hmm. um but we were still, you know, skateboard kids. Um, I was going to say, didn't you, weren't you like a, uh, you're a really good skateboarder prior to joining Granddaddy? Were you? I wasn't, I definitely wasn't the best skater in Granddaddy. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a decent skater. I can still ollie and probably flip the board around when I get That's lucky awesome. and stuff. But um, Jason was a, was a sponsored amateur uh -huh. um, on the, on his way to going pro. Kevin, who passed away a few years ago, um, mm -hmm. sadly, but he was a really good street skater and, and also transition skater. And then, Tim and Aaron are also good skaters as well. So yeah, we were all skateboarders. Um, and I, now that my son is three and a half, so I've been starting to skate with him. That's cool. I have a five-year-old and I've been doing the same thing. That's okay. how I got into music really was through school totally. skateboarding videos. Like that's how I found out about, you know, Iron Maiden and Misfits and, and a lot of these bands yeah, was because they're in these videos. And at the end you'd worth the credits and be like, who was Jamie Thomas skating to? What was that song? Like the time, you know, these random awesome bands yeah it's 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 really cool how that stuff happens and how it spreads the culture um i was just i was watching the other day um the first time i watched it was it was on silent because my son was actually going to sleep but i watched the new foundation video and i really love this skater named Corey glick okay and, um he's he's just an incredible dude great style um both like his skateboarding style and his fashion mm -hmm. um and he's skating to a granddaddy song really like, yeah i hit him up on instagram and i mean granddaddy has been licensed a fair bit in in uh skateboard videos and then That's probably so one of my favorite professional achievements that i've ever experienced is that um jason lee the actor yeah and also he's former a professional huge skateboard yeah huge skater for uh he skated for what airwalk back in the day airwalk yeah and he started stereo with chris pastris mm -hmm. and jason's a huge granddaddy fan um he actually named his first son after a granddaddy song but anyway wow um, that's cool <laughs> he, has, he has a son named pilot who's now 18 almost i think oh my gosh but um pilot is also a good skater now um but he named his son after a granddaddy song but jason and chris from stereo a few years ago they hit me up and um they were like can we can we use this all, all smiles was my solo project mm -hmm. um they're like can we use this all smile song this song called the brightest beyond for a stereo part and i was just like hell yes yeah Absolutely. that is so rad that is so rad i and it's it's awesome how huge the skateboarding culture became like it, how it's i mean it's more corporate now but in the back in the day it was like 
these VHS tapes and 411 magazines and like yeah. just trying to find videos and people's parts. And now you can just go on YouTube and watch it all. But it was like, there's something special about like having one of your friends, we'd pull our money together to buy the new zero video or whatever, yeah, totally. you know, we'd tra trade it around. And it yeah, was man. just, that was such it's, a cool culture. It's still, a, it's still a wonderful culture. I mean, as big as it's gotten, mm -hmm. um, I still think that, the skateboard community is is you know leads the way in in so many cultural respects you know oh, like sure uh, even fashion like you said earlier that totally was, yeah that absolutely set the tone for people i mean look at like even when baker came out with like greco and those guys and eric ellington that started being like they had like this whole punk flavor that they brought to, to certain brands that really wasn't i don't think it's huge totally yeah and it's still happening my friend shoots he actually did the press shots. We don't have press shots with Jacob and I yet, sadly, but my friend who did the ones that are out there right now, just me, his name is Dustin Axland. He's also a Modesto kid, but he shoots for, you know, big fashion brands and big advertisements, but he shoots for Huff a little bit. And, uh, oh, wow. those kids that are on, Huff, not kids, they are kids to me, but like right. Carlisle Akins and, um, Mason Silva, who just won skater of the year. Like they're, those guys are in fashion ads now so crazy that's so it's, that's so rad that's i so love cool that they're wonderful yeah, looking you, people you know yeah you came from that same like that's exactly how i got into music i read that you're a skater and i was like this is that's so dope <laughs> yeah yeah it's a huge part of who i am and i think it's informed me a lot about you know i mean jacob and i were talking about this when we started talking well we were doing an interview last week and talking about some of the more automatic or reflexive or responsive, um, automatically responsive to your environment aspects of the compositions, particularly we have this EP that's almost done um, that we're gonna start mixing soon that we're gonna have come out later this year, which you know everybody always thinks our newest work is the best, but I'm really, really stoked on it. I was just listening to it this morning, the stuff where it's at right now, it's not quite done. But anyway, um, so much of what we have done has just been especially the stuff that we've done together has just been based on like these very simple chord sequences and rhythms that I'll come up with. And then Jacob and I will just start piling on from there. And it, I don't think that that compositional style, which I really love um, would be as available to me if I hadn't been a skateboarder, just, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in the same way that you, if, especially if you're a street skater, well, any sort of skater, but if you show up at a place to skate, um, it's not going to be exactly what you had in mind. It's not going to be perfect and you have to adapt to it and you have to respond to it with, with your abilities and with your mm -hmm. sensibilities. And, um, I think that's also the, the small Isles project. I'm not just saying this because of what we're talking about, but, um, the small Isles project is really informed by what skateboarding taught me from, at least from my perspective, like, mm -hmm um just start start someplace and be willing to continue going until until you're you know having fun until you're enjoying it and that's skateboarding taught me that straight up like that's that's exactly what i was gonna say jim like i was not a skateboarder i always thought skateboarding was cool i did get a skateboard as a, as a you know a teenager but i actually remember uh when one of my friends it was like in high school and they were like you know we got some downtime and uh we're gonna show a video and it was my, one of my friends who was a skateboarder who just showed us a video that he'd made with his his buddies like that weekend um just like going out you know doing some doing some skating and filming it and when you're like 15 16 and i'm sure jim you can speak more to this but this idea of like oh wait, like nobody told you to go do this. Like you just decided you wanted to go do it. And then you just went and you figured it out and you made something and you just jumped in. I think mm -hmm. that's a huge overlap with how we've made music is, are we having fun and who knows where it's gonna go and let's just jump in. And so much of, I mean, a lot of people, there's always, there's a lot of sort of secondary talk about, you know, you know, press and promo and the record and what's the story behind it. And that's all well and good, but you have to just start making it. You have to get something that you can show to people. And mm -hmm. I feel like in a way, it, even though I was not a skateboarder myself, it feels like we're making like a skate video. Sure. 
I mean, that makes a lot of sense because back yeah. when you'd go to go skating, you would just show up somewhere. Like Jim was saying, you, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't know, like somebody might do something crazy. And then now you have a piece of what will become a part of your, your video. Like if like the foundation video you're talking about, like a section of that video was shot. That whole video is shot over the course of a long period of time. It's not like you yeah. show up to one spot, film 10 tricks, and then that's your, your part in the video. It's like, you might get one little piece of, mm -hmm the part in the video that day and you might not you might just get something that's cool but it it won't make you know the part or it's just for yourself and it's something so cool about going out daily and trying to grab something that might be something that you ended up using later in life or later yeah man life. process is everything you know like there's so many incredible examples um throughout creative history and i, I also consider skateboarding to be a very creative endeavor not not a, even as much of a sport but anyway like you just have to give yourself to it and i think music is that way like i don't one thing that i've learned over the last probably only a few years is that i used to feel bad about myself if i didn't like put in eight hours a day five days a week at the studio mm -hmm. it turns out that if i do that the results are generally speaking like not as good and the productivity is not as great as if I'm just, if I just make sure that I hold very tight to the idea of like three to four concentrated hours, fuck the phone. My current writing room doesn't have internet. The, the, like L the LTE is really spotty. Okay. So that's, it's a total advantage. I'm not uh -huh. there right now, but like, so when I go there, it's just, um, it's just do this thing. You know what I mean? And I think that if you carve out that space for yourself and, and, and for the endeavor, then, you know, the results are going to be good. And that's, you know, skateboard videos. That's so much of what yeah. the, I've watched a few of those people, you know, work on tricks just at parks and stuff. And like, for, first of all, the, the bar is so much higher now because they do it all the time, but, but still like they're going to do that trick. And if it takes them 15 times, they're going to do it, but it's, it's process and practice. And what is at the core of that? is a love you know what i mean as much as there might be a drive for results there's a love for that for that thing sure it's like shutting out every like you said you're shutting out everything aside from what you're really focusing on like with skateboarding you could leave your phone in the car and go skate for three hours and not worry about yeah. what's going on there it's just focusing on whatever trick you want to learn i mean i even s still go out with my i have a five-year-old and a 13 year old and we just go skate the skate park i mean screwing around for a few hours you just get lost you know what i mean you just like you get lost in the time and you come mm -hmm. back and you're like wow i was out there for two hours like what totally yeah. <laughs> it's just yeah. incredible yeah and i think also jim like when we for this for this next dp that's coming out um a big moment was when we realized as we were you know, we're working on this music remotely over Zoom with our mobile rigs and just wherever we were um, starting to arrange these songs, record and arrange these songs. The big turning point was when it was like, all right, I think maybe we just, this is our day now. Like maybe it's multiple, maybe it's multiple times a week, but if it's not multiple times a week, this one day a week is our day. And then we'll just show up. And that was our, um, deliberate um schedule and it just like just checking in you know and like that's the equivalent of you know it's just that kind of commitment you do you commit to something once a week and then all of a sudden you you look up kind of like after two hours of being at the skate park we've been we've been going back and forth over zoom now for a couple of months and now we have an, a whole body of work it's really exciting that's so cool. And real quick, Jacob, I didn't even get your story. Where were you born and raised? I was born and raised outside of Philadelphia oh, in wow, the okay. western suburbs there. And how, how did you get into music? Because you guys, you're more of a composer, right? A songwriter composer? Right. Jim and I met in L.A. Um, through a mutual friend really serendipitously at a coffee shop. Oh, and interesting. And we realized we had some friends in common. And um, I think what we realized quickly was just how fun it was to, to 
bounce ideas off of each other. Um, and yeah, I've always been writing songs, um, making my own records, writing with other people. And then in the past couple of years, I've gotten into producing people's uh, records and then composing for film and TV. So okay. we definitely had that. We definitely found that overlap of like a love for instrumental music and mm -hmm. and then Jim started showing me what his some of his latest ideas were and and you know I I was like oh I maybe could hear this uh, this like vocal line this sort of not any, not singing any words but just kind of making something textural with the voice mm -hmm. and and we just kept started trying things and I mean that seems to be the biggest kind of overlap is like let's try it you know mm -hmm. that's my only rule when I'm working with anyone is you know, there's nothing worse than someone being in a room and someone says, I, I have an idea. And someone's like, uh, I don't think that would be good. I don't think it would sound good. It's like you're either an a-hole or, you, uh, or you're a mind reader. So, right. and most of the time people aren't mind readers. So <laughs> just try it. Yeah. You have well, to try it. And we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, like Jacob's in really good company saying that because I was listening to, it was Rick Rubin was featured on a pro podcast. It may have been with, uh, what's the dude's name? Um, it's called the moment Brian something anyway, he's a filmmaker. He, so he was interviewing Rick Rubin and Rick Rubin's like, I always try everything because it's just quicker. Like if, if your answer is indifference or no, mm -hmm. there's inevitably going to be discussion and all this stuff, this debate around it, which is just like, oh, it's energy wasting. It's time wasting. So somebody's like, I hear this, cue up the track and do it. And everybody's right. going to know immediately, including the person who had the idea, probably that like, that works that's worth or, pursuing or refining or, it or it's like that's uh, didn't yeah, really work. instead of arguing about it like oh well that's not gonna work yeah it is i trust me it's gonna work no it's not like you could you spent all that time right. when it was just like right. just try it real quick <laughs> totally and like that's that's been a big thing with jacob and i and um i mean you'll you'll you can hear the results a little bit on the record mm -hmm. but you know we've really again refined our process a lot since we started working on this new ep and December and we're really close to it being done now but you know there's been so many times where either one of us is just like how about this ba -da 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 -da, whatever against that it's like mm -hmm. da -da -da. and you know immediately like we're on to something or it's like it needs to be shifted fewer notes longer notes whatever but the thing needs to exist for there to be any discussion about it this mm -hmm. as Jacob yeah. was saying like mind readers I don't know I don't know any of them and I know some smart people you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally yeah, well, you like, I mean, I love the the feel of the record. There is that real cinematic feel to it, and even going back to skateboarding, like I could, I could hear, I could listen to your record and just see like these beautiful like shots of tricks and like slow motion or whatever. Like it just has a cinematic feel to to the whole album, and I love it. So I mean, good. that's been one of my objectives since day zero. Is uh, I know, or I sh shouldn't say I know. I'm kind of like Instagram friends with a few pro skaters and um, shit, I'm just going to call them out. Cause hopefully they'll call me like people like Leo Romero or Dakota Servold, Corey Glick, uh, Aaron Homoki, like a few of those dudes. I, I want them to like send me 20 tricks one time and, and we can, we can score it. Like I would love to score a, a skateboard video that'd be so cool i don't know if anyone's done that to be honest because it, it's know. always taken elements from other rad songs like we said like that's how i found certain bands but i don't think anyone's ever taken a whole skateboard video and really wrote a score to it yeah i don't i don't believe that has happened i mean or like if williams william strobeck who makes the supreme videos and mm -hmm. was on alien stuff greg hunt is also a uh you know video maker who's done amazing stuff like if greg came to me if william strobeck like uh like Tyshawn I would love it if Tyshawn came and said like you know he's like a full-on New York street kid but, mm -hmm. but but is also now one of the most successful and, and greatest skateboarders in the world but I think like the the cinematic nature of something like that because a lot of times what happens is you know people go toward hip-hop and right. punk rock or rock which you know works beautifully with skateboarding mm -hmm. um but I would love to also because I think that it's such it's just such a it's, it's the coolest thing you can do like skateboarding is the coolest mm -hmm. thing you can do and so I, like it's such a it's such a grand thing and not that again you know not that rock and and uh hip-hop 
fall short, but I would love for a skateboard part at some point to be treated with like, I'm going to score this. This is like, this is real art, you know? It really is. It's, it's especially, I mean, it's always been, but now the, the level of skateboarding is just so oh, beyond sure. where sure. I was at. Like when I was skateboarding, it was like guys like Peter Smolik and like the, the Osiris dudes were, that were doing flip tricks to like a slide or grind and then flip trick out. And it was like mind blowing. Now these guys are doing that. The, the small, like these guys that are just flowed by a company are doing that, like in their yeah, sleep. Totally. totally. And it's like, it's crazy, but uh, I would crazy. love to see that. I would love to see a score. You guys score a skate video that definitely needs to happen. Yeah. Supreme. I mean, William Stroback and Supreme get at us. We're, we're ready. Yeah. That would be killer. Um, well, so did, did this project kind of start Jim, like as something you were doing on tour with modest mouse, like that's what I read kind of like it was it did, it yeah, I mean, that way. Totally. I would, uh, you know, I was trying to come up with ways to, um, just be more, well, positive on the road, really <laughs> also productive, you know, cause, um, I would go for my run in the morning and then, uh, I stopped drinking in 2016 after years of doing that. Thank you. So did I, I just got my four year chip. I'm holding it right here. Oh, nice. Work. <laughs> well done. Thank you. I got a quarantine one. It says quarantine and it, uh, I should show you, but it's got the AA founders on the front here and they're like in masks. <laughs> oh, lot. sweet. So let's see if I can get it out of this dumb bag. Hang on. But yeah, I, I quit in 2016 as well. Oh, well done. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice. Yeah, nice but work, man. that's cool. But, um, um, but, so you so go I for a run, sorry. And, and, yeah, so I would, I would wake up from me morning. here. No, no, man. We're, we're all in a conversation together. Congratulations. <laughs> but I would, I would just, you know, I would, I would wake up and do my run and get the morning stuff out of the way, you know, talk to Natasha for a while. And then uh, I would have, there's hours between when all that was done um, and sound check. And so it started like I, there were on the first run that I really brought an actual mobile rig out that was functional. Um, I made a few pieces that I would just like record and bring the members of Modest Mouse in. And um, I'd be like, hey, you know, you guys, I just put down this chord sequence, add anything you want. I don't care. I'm not going to direct you. And so there were some cool things that came from that. Um, but it was also, you know, everybody's just got different energy throughout the day. And everybody's energy doesn't have to match mine. And I started to feel like I was, you know, the, the weird Friday night lights football coach when people didn't necessarily want that. Come on guys, let's be productive. <laughs> so I just started or continued doing it, but I wasn't asking people to jump on anymore. I was just like making stuff, making stuff, making stuff. So it was around that time when I met Jacob, I was meeting my friend, this guy, Tom DeSavia, who's in the publishing world. Um, I was meeting him and this cafe in Westwood. And then Jacob walked in with his manager, David. And there's this guy named Tony Berg, who, you know, is a really great producer and just That's, name sounds familiar. Yeah. I mean, Tony, he's, a, he's like, you know, he's been at labels. He's an incredible producer. Him and Blake Mills now run uh, sound city in Van. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you know, Tony's worked for, with everybody from like Peter Gabriel to, you know, has co-produced both, both of like Phoebe Bridgers records and like, wow. what else, Jacob, Michael Penn and all, all I mean, he's, he's, mm -hmm. amazing. he's, he's mm -hmm. just like, and has worked with Jacob. And so anyway, Jacob and his manager were meeting Tony, who I've known for a long time. And Tom and I are like, Hey, Tony, what, what the hell is Jacob? Okay. So let's, let's hang out sometime. And then these little things that I had started to develop on the road with Modest Mouse, the ones that I liked the most, um, I think Jacob and I maybe tried to get together for a couple of days and the first day we may have come up with some sort of song i don't remember exactly i think we actually did make a songish thing that never got finished but then he showed up in my little writing room in culver city one day and like walked in and i was working on life at one just getting a little the one the song for the video mm -hmm. um the earlier early version of it and you know he's like what is this oh it's just something i'm working on you if you want to try to throw something at this try it and then, you know, just a few hours later, there were all these stacked harmonies and um, my wife, Natasha, made these these beautiful like ceramic bells. Mm -hmm. And so Jacob was like, what are those over there? Oh, uh, let's let's try to throw. I was like, oh, they're bells. You know, Natasha made those. I was going to uh, mount them and use them with mallets. And he's like, well, takes a drumstick. And this, I've said this a couple of times, but this is one of the 
coolest things about working with Jacob too is that, you know, um, in my experience, you know, because Jacob is is totally formally tra formally trained, um, and I have some of those skills, but I but I definitely don't have really much formal training. And a lot of times, what happens when you encounter people who do have that formal training, it's not as easy for them to be as like innovative. Sure. And um, it's kind of hard as, for them to break out of what they know, totally. right? Like knowing certain like theory like that doesn't work like that doesn't go with that kind of completely thing. Like, yeah i completely. can see that and, and jacob is is not that way at all like you know he's he's a lot more the type of person who looks at a ceramic bell which is meant to be like used with mallets <laughs> and he's like let's play it this way and then we start treating it with delay and reverb and you know just make interesting sounds and interesting harmonies and things like that and so um that that was one of the earliest flashes of like this is cool I, i'm I really like the results of this. So, you know, he came back a couple of more times and added to stuff on the record. And then once the record was done, mixed and mastered, and you know, I also I'm the director of AR at Danger Bird. So wow. we we're talking about how to uh what this record is on what's now an imprint of Danger Bird called AKP. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about how to roll this record out. And in those conversations, I was realizing that all my favorite moments on the record were the ones with Jacob. So I hit him up last summer and I said, Hey, I've got a few more ideas. You know, what if, what if we actually like treat this thing like a partnership rather than you responding to stuff that I've written? And I'll just like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, send you all the normal caveats. Like these aren't done. Maybe I should be self-conscious about these, but I'd like to be less self-conscious with you and just say like, here's basically a chord sequence. Mm -hmm. And so we started um, collaborating, you know, it was during full on peak, covid so you yes. know sent jacob like a bunch of demos and um we just started getting on zoom and then over the last few months we've done a ton of stuff and we now have this ep that's almost done and uh, a, a woman that jacob went to school with sienna peck she's added these beautiful strings to one of the tracks and is going to add some to i think maybe a few more and then um and then we want to start playing this stuff live like we want to I really want to have like this like big almost like as big as death heaven sounds like mm -hmm. massive rock sound but then to have the beauty of like you know some of the classic like elfman scores or johan johansson or like mm -hmm. max richter i want to i want to combine those two worlds in a live thing as well and just crank out a ton of music like i have you know the the seeds of at least i don't know a few albums worth of stuff i just wow. i'm always like so what, you know, we, we can just, my objective is to, to totally treat this like, you know, Metro Boomin or, or Lil Wayne and just like get a lot of music out there. Seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, and it sounds like, cause you already put a record out this earlier this we, year and you already have another EP almost. Yeah. We finished. just put this record out last week. It was released last Friday. And then we have another EP that, you know, I hope to be sending it to Mike Creswell who mixes all of this. I hope to be sending this, you know, the the files to him like in the next few weeks and then we should have a mixed yeah. second ep done i don't know hopefully like late july and then out later this year wow wow well I, i'm curious jacob you have you know formal training in this and did you go mm -hmm. to berkeley or did you go to co like school at one of these big conservatories or well i i got my master's at nyu for uh, oh. film scoring and <laughs> there <you> go. <laughs> or orchestration there's a little school and, that he went to called Ed New York <laughs> University <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. near Washington Square in <laughs> yeah. the village no that was so, th so and that was amazing like I and also Jim thanks for saying all that and uh, I'd say that like the interesting thing is I, I, I do have a lot of formal training like studying music for you know in school but mm -hmm. I also, you know, I'm a, I'm not a great sight reader. Um, I, I've always experienced music by ear and I've just always he has a crazy ear. It's fucking, nuts. Say, are you like one of the perfect pitch people that you could hear a note yeah. and just know? I'm not exactly that guy, the, the perfect pitch guy, but I do have what's called perfect relative pitch so if you gave me a note then i could tell you if you played another note i could tell you what it was um but it's more so, like, like phenomenal you know, um, 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, and so, but I've always experienced music, you know, by ear. And when, when I was like a teenager, especially, that was when I was like, whenever I heard something that I liked, any song, pop song, rock song, jazz, whatever, I just needed to know what it was. So I would go to the piano and just figure it out. And then it was like building a vocabulary of just the way that that chords move and in a variety of genres. And so I, um, yeah, so that's the formal training of it is like going to school for sure. But I've always just played in bands and I've written with people. And when I was making that record with Tony Berg, um, I was thinking a lot about arrangement and thinking about, you know, how you place uh, elements in the stereo field and creating a unique sonic palette and just like, just starting to get really into it, into mm -hmm. record making and, and, and building up, building up songs. Um, so I try to combine both, you know, you, 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 what did they say? The Mark Twain thing is like, I never let my education get in the way of my, I, let, I never let, what is it? I never let school get in the way of my education, something like that. No. Yeah. So <laughs> that. that's how I feel about that. That's cool. Well, I mean, wow. So you, yeah, obviously you have a great ear. You go to NYU, get your master's in, in film scoring. And I, <laughs> like, so then when you guys link up, it's like, hey, I already have this instrumental music. Do you, what can you, you know, what are you going to add? Like you guys, well, even, is that but it's even, even more than that? It's been like, that was the, more the case on the, on the record, but on this okay. one, it's been like, here's basically, it's almost like a loop. Like here's me playing in most cases, like here's a principal melody, here's a mm -hmm. chord sequence, but it just kind of like goes for a few minutes. And then we start just start carving it out. And you know, really the way, I mean, the, the thesis statement for this project is imagined scores for imaginary films. And so when Jacob, you know, and it's, it's really when we, when the way the, like all the ideas that I have for future recordings and stuff that some of which Jacob hasn't even heard yet, but I'm just trying not, I'm trying to like, if something gives me a mood, it gives me a feeling of like, this could be a cue, this could exist in the movie. I just put it down and then I get, and then I want to like present it to Jacob. I don't want to have like an objective in the same way that like, and then however he responds to that, it's just a conversation. It's just like, Hey man, I love blueberries. Found some fresh ones for breakfast. That conversation is going to wind up wherever it winds up, you know, right. in the next few minutes. Right. Um, and I would say, let's and, make pancakes. That's where I would go. <laughs> right. And so ex that's like truly that's what I'm. So I don't. You know, it starts and it and it goes and like, um, so with the imagined scores for imaginary films, like idea. You know, here's here's a main melody and here's a chord sequence basically, or here's a rhythm or something like that. Whatever the whatever the like constituent parts are that start the conversation but like just jacob will just throw stuff at it and then i'll reply you know it's just it's just back and forth it's truly conversational and then once you know i kind of have these groups of uh of ideas like this ep that we're just getting done with um i i was just picturing that movie the Bla last black man in san francisco mm -hmm. so like if the if the chord sequences made me think of that like the colors of San Francisco, that light, that kind of like constant overcast, like that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, and then, so then Jacob and I just start doing stuff and he's like, here's a melody, here's a texture. And he'll, he, he does these things called, he's like, here, here's our band. So it'll be like, this is like, you know, fucking glass harmonium with cello with like boom, boom, big double bass or something like that. And then start making right. melodies with that, with those pictures. And then it's like, where are we going to place those to, to imply this visual narrative because, you know, the objective is that we want to, you know, we collaborated with Riley who made that incredible video for life mm -hmm. at one. And the collaboration was a little more like, this is the idea for the video with the song. Where can you take it? And he took it someplace that I could never have imagined, but I would like to even do stuff earlier where it's like Jacob and I are presenting these, like these kind of sonic moods, and then we exist, those start to, you know, exist in reciprocal conversation mm -hmm. with, you know, dancers, with filmmakers. Oh, with, sure. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. what I would love to see. Or even like, you know, talking yeah. about somebody like William Strobeck who makes the Supreme Skate mm -hmm. videos. Like if he came to us and was like, right. 
I got a couple clips. I want to do longer shots. It's all going to be lines. It's all going to be like four right. tricks or more, something like that. Then it's like Jacob and I could go, cool. Here's four right. cues. What do you think? And then we start going back and forth. Like that's, that's what my yeah. objective I is for this project. Go ahead, Jacob. You know, I was just going to jump in and say that in sort of in the way that like this collaboration is very responsive, not, not everybody makes music and thinks how can this be responded to either mm -hmm. by a filmmaker or a dancer or a skateboarder but i think very specifically we're like we're making music to be responded to to be integrated into some other activity into some other medium and I, the thing that i was going to say jim to just sort of like uh bring a little more color to the picture that you're describing is usually you're not just sending me like a couple chord progressions on loop really it's it's more like there is a actual structure and it's a, a composition that has arcs and peaks and valleys and i think like if you're thinking about someone that dancing to it or making a film to it or mm -hmm. skating to it they're not going to want it to be the same thing the whole time it's not it's not at all a loop it's more like this is a moment where there's a big crescendo and then this is the moment where the drums drop out and then at the end it's the drums and the bass and the strings and the guitars and everything right it's mm -hmm. like there's a beginning and the middle of an end and an end and usually that's what jim's been presenting to me which makes it um which makes it a lot easier in terms of thinking about themes and textures and things like that and mm -hmm. Well, okay, yeah, so, so to, to, to further clarify that, to be responded to. Oh, sorry, I was going to say to further clarify that, like, if there are like structures that are there, um, I think, you know, the, the flourishes are, they're, they're totally implications in the early stages. And, you know, uh, when, when Jacob and that's the magic of it is like, they would just be these kind of like rote, blah, 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 blah things mm -hmm. without like, <laughs> the, the dynamism of, of the two of us like really digging in and thinking about like how could this you know how could this add to a story mm -hmm. like, you know i like how, how you have the conversation aspect like including a different medium it's not like a basic song structure like okay we're going to write an intro and a chorus and a, and a verse and a bridge and then that's it it's like you could have a piece and then if you collaborated with somebody like a, a filmmaker or an animator then it's like oh well i that this part will be really cool here but what if i did this and then you could go oh you know what What if i add this to that part to kind of build the story along as it kind of absolutely evolves, right is that's kind of the concept absolutely yeah and and you know that's something that we've talked about a lot too is like not being hemmed in i mean i love songs like i've made my right. life around songs <laughs> sure, like that's what sure. i've done but and the i consider these songs and i consider these like very listenable compositions but they definitely mm -hmm. don't adhere to specific like song structure generally speaking especially mm -hmm. with some of the new stuff that we're working on today like i i was listening uh to it this morning and i was just like man these these structures are just like they're fucking bizarre but they're very listenable and really mm -hmm. beautiful and like intriguing and magnetic and that's that's also a really fun thing too is like to think about because you know there's ways where you can go like okay well i'm i'm gonna i'm not gonna be hemmed in by uh convention but then but then it's not that listenable which sure. you know that's also that can be an objective for music too is just to make like noisy stuff that like gives you that sort of like uh sensation of, of friction or anxiety or something like that mm -hmm. but i want our music to be beautiful i want it to mostly you know like there there can be tension there can be darkness but i want it to be like you know i want there to be melodies and i want there to be texture which enhances those melodies but it's really cool that you, I think the experiment for us is like, another part of it is to make songs, to make music that can be listened to, but, but also surprising, mm -hmm. you know, like not, not in any way, like first chorus, like there might just be stuff that drops out at some unexpected moment, but right. you know, you structurally and a, arrangement wise make that exist, you know, like also another thing too, thinking about the visual medium is like so often, you know, things in our lives 
the best the best stories right that we could tell the reason why they're great stories is because it's unexpected if i'm sitting down i'm like adam jacob check this out and then the story is back to breakfast like <laughs> the story is you guys i made scrambled eggs and toast this morning and you're like fucking who cares you know like that, that's that's not a story <laughs> right but you know if there's some if there's some other thing if it's like I made scrambled eggs and toast, but the most but interesting missed- thing is that a toucan walked in. What's that, Jacob? <laughs> He's stalling right. through. Someone yeah. knocked on the door. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Someone oh, knocked sure. on the door, yeah. and they had a toucan on their shoulder. <laughs> and then it turns out that the toucan actually knows how to drive a Lamborghini. And this really happened. You know, that's a much more interesting story. Sure. And that's something that you would listen to. That is a trippy story. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know like what i'm saying is that that those those things those you know especially as we get further and further into like peak capitalism the stories are yeah just have the potential to get fucking weirder and weirder and as we encroach more and more on nature they have the, mm-hmm. it, the potential is there for it to get weirder and weirder so you know like i i really like the idea of uh our music being very listenable in most cases and very inviting and beautiful and melodic but not needing to adhere to like this is this followed mm-hmm. by this followed by this and you know it and you've heard it a million times i like that yeah and i and i think you've accomplished that but i mean from what i've heard on that first record it's amazing and it flows beautifully like, it's one of those records that you'd put on and listen to it from beginning to end it's not like okay i want to skip to track three <laughs> or you know oh, what cool. i mean like i feel like there's something to be said about a record that you could just put on and and sit back and wait for it not wait for but listen to it front to back oh awesome that's great to hear man thank you that's and awesome and i'm sure there's a reason and, and i've gotten to this with people before about their records it's like i know like there's a reason why you chose song three to be song three and song seven to be song seven because it uh, how it sonically moves i would yeah would imagine absolutely. right absolutely yeah and is that totally. was with this record like was it difficult to kind of weave it all together like that or did you like when you're writing these compositions is it like okay i have this one done and then life at one done like how am i going to blend sonically blend it into like a cohesive kind of cuz it feels like it's like a cohesive piece like you know how it runs through yeah i'm i'm stoked that you think that i mean the sequence was definitely it was difficult in the sense that uh, there was a rut that I was stuck in, which is that, um, so this this piece of music was meant as like, it was meant to serve as a mood board for Ang Lee and Rick Moody to come together and uh, write some sort of like um, sympathetic sequel to the Ice Storm, not a direct sequel in the sense okay. of like the same characters, but um, a, a parallel story in the fabric of time with different characters. So. It was meant for these songs were meant for uh, the inevitability, actually, that Rick Moody and Ang Lee are going to come together <laughs> and like um, use these songs. The nice movie. man, it yes, for, dude. Will and, it? Will it into the universe? <laughs> and then they, you know, uh, and then this would serve as a mood board and the cues for that for that film. Um, so at first, I I was really like stuck, like, okay, I'm going to make it so that first cue is the beginning of the film, and then we go through, uh, you know, Act One, Two, and Three, and then the last cue but as it turned out it just it just didn't function that well because the 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 song that closes it now the plot to take clover um mm-hmm. that that was an earlier in the in the movie the movie as i was picturing oh uh, sure okay but it would just it just didn't work as a record you know so mm-hmm. it was obviously because the movie doesn't exist yet um, you had a shift more, you shifted it, it to the important that, uh, end of the record okay yeah amazing and were you guys you said you met at a coffee shop that's originally how you guys met Mm -hmm. um and you had these songs jim and when did it start as okay let's put this together and kind of create a project like where was like i'm thinking time period wise like when did covid kind of happen and did that affect your like process all this stuff that jacob did on the record i mean he's so quick he did it all especially you know because when we're together it's it's even so much easier but he did it all in like I think seriously like two days or three days or something. Oh, wow. Quick. Okay. Like, <laughs> like less, th- like less than a total of seven hours, probably. Oh my God. He just did it all. 
Um, but so that was the first record you guys just kind of hammered it out on the ideas yeah. that you currently had or you had from you right. were talking about with the well, like on the road with Modest Mouse or whatever. Yeah. And then the new the new EP. I mean, so so basically, again, the record was done. And then I just called Jacob. I kept thinking about it, you know, and I'm trying to get better as I get older about, you know, getting the stuff that I want to happen to happen. So I'd been I'd been, you know, chopping this out in my mind for a couple of months. And I just called him one day and I was like, I love the stuff that you did on the record. Can we figure out a way to do more of that? Um, and it took a couple of months because, you know, the, the realities of COVID and, and mm -hmm. you know, geographical separations and all these different things. And so finally, we just decided, like, well, we both like this idea. We need to figure out a way to do it. So Jacob just hooked up his his interface to Zoom. And we, you know, we had it was different Mondays for a while, Tuesdays for a while. But we just like would get together for a couple of hours in between our other responsibilities. And it, but it, it still is pretty quick i think that you know our we we're we're lucky that so far you know we our aesthetic really like jives you know it, it mm -hmm. we combine well together so here's a chord sequence here's a thing jacob has these great ideas for melodies and harmonies and you know it's all pretty quick and and, and quick again time. like when the weird stuff happens there's this song called uh well um Let's see, it's it's it, it doesn't matter the current title. There's one of the songs for the new because I don't because I'm gonna change it. But um, okay, <laughs> one of the songs for the new record where Jacob was like, I think like half joking and half serious. He had this uh, this idea for this great vocal to stack like these staccato little bursts of like activity, mm -hmm. and I was like, that's it. That's the thing. Like that's that's the hook for this whole jam. Do that, and he's like, okay. So he just stacked up all these different like. It's almost like. It's very dreamy, borderline nightmarish, but it's really cool. And I don't think that I've heard it done before. It's hard to describe music, you know, but um, it is that sort of stuff. I just like, it's again, it's fun and it's easy and it's exciting, man. Like mm -hmm. it's because it's a total hook in a very unconventional way. And you can picture it like going with something visual. Mm hmm yeah we, yeah adam you've got to we've got to send you at least a like a, a rough of of uh of the new stuff so you can get a sense of what it is we're talking about i would love to hear it i'm super excited like i said i love the record that you guys have out and i i'd like i that's i like you listening to film scores and it totally has that vibe like the one of my favorite ones to listen to is the social network one that trent Reznor did with Alex totally. ross like yeah. yeah i just think the piano and like everything they did in that is just so cool and like beautiful like so when i was when i'm working you know on my computer or whatever i'll have that on just like uh that that soundtrack <laughs> it's just totally. so random but i love it it's it's yeah. there's and i feel like that's kind of how what like a team you guys are kind of like a team like they are where it's like what you're doing is so rad and it doesn't need any vocal as far as like words and and that type of structure to make a really awesome album Oh, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, thanks for that. And I can't wait, you know, till, um, you know, we have the ability to just get together in person more often. Because sure. I know, you know, it's, it's, I mean, the the hard work is to get the stuff to be right. But the ideas, the the triggering ideas, um, you know, knock on wood. Um, that's it's never been a problem for me to just come up with a million like chord sequences or drum machine mm -hmm. patterns or something that's again starts the conversation and the best thing about that you know at, again as i get older but like to me collaboration is everything like i i used to be like oh i need to sit down and do all this myself because i can play bass and i can play guitar and i can play drums and mm -hmm. i have to prove to myself and everybody else that i can do it it's like no, fuck that i just want to make a ton of great music and <laughs> right. the best way to make a ton of great music is to be right surrounded by great collaborators because that mm -hmm. push you you want to impress them you want to respond to them you want to like you know do justice to that notion mm -hmm. so i can't wait for us to be in person and just like dig in and do that like surrounded by pianos and guitars and keyboards and just like yo dude what do you think is okay great and then he's got a weird <laughs> yeah. series of chords underneath it and then we're like we're moving you know mm -hmm. right Hopefully sooner than later i mean stuff's starting to open up a bit and i hope you guys are able to get together a lot more totally. often you know yeah yeah, I'm finally get, coming back to LA right after the 4th of July for at least a week. 
and so maybe we'll do something then and then if and then you know yeah as the world starts to open up a bit um yeah yeah it's just it's it's really i I was gonna say jim that it's also yeah it's like tempting to do stuff on your own and there's some projects that are going to be totally solo that's just the way it goes you know but um but it's it's more fun when you when you're able to like be a part of the give and take and be a part of of something with somebody else and you know the best thing you can do when you come up with something and that you think is great is to show it to somebody else you're going to hear it in a different way you're going to think about it in a different way you know even if that person doesn't end up being your collaborator it's just like you know the music that we make is supposed to be showed to uh, it's just, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be shown and it's supposed to be performed it's supposed to be enjoyed and so i think when you start getting into that mindset of like okay who am i showing this to and when's the live show and what are we wearing right and what does the music video <laughs> look like like sure, sure those are all the fun questions as opposed to like what am i trying to do you know mm-hmm. as as much as what am i trying to do there's like what's the music video and what's the wardrobe as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that same vein, do you guys like when you you talk about having a live set and making it big and and everything? Do you feel like you'll have a storyline like the Life at One video, like to kind of goes along with your entire live set? Or yeah, I mean, it- I would love to have I would love to have visuals along with that. Gotta you know, have um, visuals. Granddaddy, that'd be along, so cool. we started that in two two thousand, um, just because we weren't that exciting to watch. And also people used to always say that granddaddy was cinematic music. So we just actually started having a screen behind us, which not a ton of bands were doing that then, but it was, it was really cool. And it was always a fun process. And I, you know, this music certainly lends itself to that. And Jacob and I are already brainstorming ideas for other visual collaborators, you know, Um, but I really appreciate the, you know, the Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. I mean, what they've done is, is so cool. And like, some of their relationships with filmmakers thinking about their relationship with David Fincher, for example, where they, it is a conversation from what I understand, like very early in the process, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I, I think it's important to know what our objectives are and Jacob and I have talked a lot about that. I mean, just like getting conversations going with, with filmmakers and, and, you know, yeah, I think it's that. only a matter of time before you guys are scoring some huge things because it your the record's rad and I would love like that skateboard video thing needs to happen because that's gonna be so sick. <laughs> yeah, Greg Hunt, William Strobeck, we're we're here, yeah. we're ready. Right, right. Oh my god, yeah. Well, so I mean you guys are working so quickly, you have another EP ready to go, and then are you just gonna keep keep moving on to the next? Yeah, I mean, that should be in mixing soon. And then, you know, um, I, you know, I, I've, this time that we've had Natasha and I have had with our son over the last year and a half without a ton of help has been absolutely incredible. Like we, you know, we're so bonded to him and we've had such amazing experiences, but it's also been very um, taxing in terms of our schedule. Oh, sure. So he's, he's just finally going to start actual preschool. You know, it's, it's safe enough again. Uh-huh. And so there's going to be, time for these sorts of things again it's not yeah it's hard to work around a child (laughs) i know your pain (laughs) in a sense (laughs) i won't be quite as wrung out and you know like i have the responsibilities which i want to make sure and uphold with danger bird as well because you Mm -hmm. know signing artists and making sure that their records get done but i really look forward to having you know a, a few more hours a week where i can dedicate myself to music and and this right now is this is my project, you know, like, uh, this is where I want to put my energy musically. And, you know, I think there's, there's a window. I remember it with granddaddy and, and, um, with a few other things that I've done where it's like, you have all of that energy and you have the ideas and you can see where it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. So before, you know, again, Lord willing, I want to have these, they're not problems. I want to have these, um, additional things to deal with in this project but before uh there are other forces involved i want to make sure that jacob and i have like a lot of music so as soon as this next ep goes into mixing like get to just it'll probably still be zoom you know he's still on the east coast but just to carve out 
even like four or five hours a week where we're just like, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I think we can get a lot of work done. Sure. I mean, you guys are working Absolutely. quick. I can't wait to hear this, this new EP. It sounds like it's going to be fantastic. And oh, real quick, uh, Jim, this is a kind of the danger for things like a new endeavor for you, right? And isn't that didn't happen pretty, I mean, not too long ago or am I? Yeah. I mean, I, I was consulting for them in 2019. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, started like late 2018, all the way through 2019. And then they needed a new A&R director in right before quarantine happened. Um, and so I had already signed, I was running what's called the Microdose series. And that's just the single series. Okay. Um, so I was running that for them. And then um, once they needed a new director of A&R, then I became that person. And so, yeah, we've, signed a bunch of really cool stuff and uh and you know with with the existing people people like matt costa yeah put on the label and you know he matt's incredible um but you know there's there's a bunch of them so oftentimes you know it's it's uh, my responsibility to just like get things across the finish line and help people you know get their records made and get their songs done and so that's been really really fun and and um you know has also i think in many ways made it easier and I for Jacob and I to easier for Jacob and I to launch the uh the small aisles project because mm -hmm. you know with the AKP imprint um I know all those people at, at Danger Bird so well right. um and there's a real understanding for what it is that we're trying to get across and it's been it's been awesome that's awesome I'm, I'm sure that's pretty rewarding for you also to see the excitement in bands and remembering probably that as growing up and you know seeing success like you know being able to, to choose an, or pick an artist and you know say we're gonna back you they that's got to be a big moment for all these these people yeah i think i think it is and you know the thing that i've discovered too is i again collaboration is everything for me i it's it's kind of starting a couple of years ago is my mission statement i you know just being a part of making music that's that's the thing you mm -hmm. know so um i it just winds up that, you know, granddaddy got signed in 1995. So I've been doing this for a long time now and, and, uh, have just accumulated a lot of, I don't know, weird esoteric knowledge that yeah, not a lot of people a lot have, of, you know, a lot of knowledge in the industry, I'm sure. Yeah. And how to make records and what all the, you know, machinery and, and, technical Every, yeah probably everything that it. goes into it i mean even on the back end the business side i'm sure totally you so could add it. totally so it's it's really you know i also think that there's a there's a responsibility that i take very seriously to you know thinking about artists like we just signed an artist called jordy she's just out of high school or like this band millie the wow. i think the oldest member of millie is 24 maybe um you know i think that there's a responsibility if you've been doing this for long enough to like try to I want to, you know, take somebody like Millie, who I've now known for a couple of years, and and um, hopefully, like all the stuff that I've learned and the mistakes that I've made, make it so that their entry point is kind of my mistakes are embedded in their like initial knowledge base. So that hopefully, they don't have to make they'll make plenty of mistakes because everybody does, but they don't have to make some of those same big ones, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just like you're paying it forward, like, you know, they get to learn from a veteran in the industry, right? Yeah, I mean, I hope that's, that's how it is. And, I, you know, it's just exciting to, it's exciting for me as a musician, too, to be around, you know, people who are at that stage and they're, they're developing Hungry their and, careers. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, ready to work. Totally. That's, that's incredible. And yeah. Uh, so thank you guys. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jacob. Oh, no, you go ahead, Adam. No, 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 no. It's it, <laughs> it's all you. I was just going to say that I can speak to that. There's a, a band that I've been producing and um, the Younger Brothers, and I showed their music to Jim. And his kind of advice from someone who's been in bands, who's at a label, uh, just being able to kind of refocus a young a young band or a young artist, more music and keep putting it out. Because sometimes 
young artists and, and young bands, they before they're just making their best record, and then you can have something to talk about. Sure. I can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, like, I don't know. I think, I also think that, again, like, look to hip hop, um, you know, mixtapes, that culture and shit, like, they got it right. They weren't waiting for, like, the gatekeepers to say, like, uh, yes, it's cool. You can, you can go through. We, we, like, they were just like, you know, people dig our stuff. We're going to make a bunch of it. Yeah. You know, and they're and hustling it. it. Like check out my record. I, you, they'd be out, you know, you'd, you'd see hip hop people with their CD in San Francisco with like a disc man and like their record inside. Like, Hey, check this out. <laughs> like I got it. Five bucks. This is going to be, you know, sell that shit out of your trunk, man. Like, yeah. You know, so cool. <laughs> it's, and you know, so that's what I think is just like, and also that's, that's been a big inspiration that younger energy too is um, with, with Jacob and my project, you know, like I, I don't take for, well, it, I don't take it for granted because it doesn't exist. Like the fact that I'm in one like fairly successful band and one very successful band, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that people are going to like what you do. You just have to like make good music that you believe in and get the word out there. You can't take anything for granted about how it's going to be perceived. The only thing that you can take for granted or the, not even take for granted. The only thing that you can do is make sure that when, you know, Jacob and I are, are closing in on finishing a track if that if that thing if that sense of like wonder and and enjoyment if we're looking at each other going like fuck yeah this is great this is really cool we're stoked about this like we get goosebumps if that happens with us the chances are better that it's going to happen with other people but you still just have to do that thing you gotta you gotta hustle to make it and you gotta hustle to make people aware that it exists you know and create your audience and that's but that's been so formative for me I, I for sure there have been times in my career where i'm like well i i've got a little bit of notoriety or acknowledgement even or whatever and so mm -hmm. then there's just going to be more of it and that's not the case like mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Well, I love that. And I, actually, that really plays into my last question for you guys is if you have any advice for aspiring artists. And I know you've been hitting us with a ton of amazing things, especially with all your knowledge of this whole industry. But I, I don't know if you have both of you, if you have any advice directly to aspiring artists. Jacob, you, you got anything? Yeah, I mean, the thing that I've been... Um, that I've been thinking about a lot. My biggest piece of advice is if you're gonna make a record, it is, it is going to be that. It's going to be an artifact and it's going to ideally live on for a long time past you. And you're putting something down, you know, that uh, like the best thing that you can do if you wanna make a record is to focus on performance. And if you want to get good performance conditions, the conditions around the artist, right. The, the conditions need to be right. So, you know, and that might be on your iPhone. That might be in the back of your car. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be at a big time studio. Maybe it is. Maybe you only do your best when you're in front of like a bunch of people looking at you through the glass, through the control room. But you have to figure out what it is that makes you tick and how you can deliver great performance um because mm -hmm. there's so many people who can sound good great guitarists great singers that super talented but um it's more than like getting the notes right you, you need to be able to deliver a performance so get the conditions right get the conditions around you right so you can deliver something special i love that thank you so much jacob sure yeah that's awesome and and then that way it's going to be just to re reply to that, it's going to be uniquely yourself, which is, which is the, the best thing that you can do is, you know, process all of these things that you like, all these influences and let them come out of you, not imagine them coming out of someone else. Cause I think almost invariably the music that we look to that we love that sticks with us for a long time, you know, whether it's Beatles or, uh, you know, Bjork or uh, Justin Vernon, like, Kendrick Lamar, you know, like mm -hmm. the greatest, um, those people there, there, you couldn't look at any of those four people, four artists and say like, yep, they were great. Cause they were like 
the stones but but better or whatever it was just like right. that, you know bjork you listen to something like hyper ballad it's like mm-hmm. what the fuck is happening <laughs> sure you're talking about walking to the cliff and throwing off cutlery and car parts and like you know like like this weird like fast beat against like these big str- it's just like on paper none of that makes sense but it's so singular and it's it's like performance is so crazy Mm-hmm. and so yeah. like i mean chill is just like that's the best you're the best that you're you're bjork you know <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. debut is like one yeah. of the greatest records ever <laughs> i mean yeah. it, you know she is just like and you know th- but there's there's like or listening to something like kendrick lamar you know i remember i remember listening we had just moved to new york and and then i'll, I'll but it's just singularity like um listening to um uh or there's backseat. Uh, shit. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Um, right, let me get the name of the song again. Um, because it's it's important to the story. But at the time, um, we had just moved to New York, and I was listening to almost exclusively. Um, this record it had just come out. The art of peer pressure, like the perspective that he, I think that's one of the saddest songs. It's one of the like most airtight indictments of late capitalism Mm -hmm. but the perspective that he's and i'll say just listen to it i'm not going to try to like summarize it but the art of peer pressure is like it's a perfect song and a big part of that perfection is because he is representing and exhibiting this very singular and unique perspective that everyone can relate to but there wasn't Mm. that much you know going on and contemporary storytelling at that time which you know there's this like aggrandizing thing but then this dim, dominionizing uh, uh it's just it's it's just a fucking beautiful it's perfect it's perfect so i love that hand. be yourself you know <laughs>